And we now move on to questions to the Assembly Commission. Questions number 3 and 12 have been withdrawn. I call Dominic Bradley. Question number one, please. And I call uh, uh, Katrina Rowan to answer the question on behalf of the Assembly Commission. Um, thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I'd also like to thank the member uh, for the question. Um, Erin Drochor, Todrek Tror Changan, a commission on Chonol, Agnil Strathesh Nagrega, Ega. Unfortunately, the Assembly Commission does not have an Irish language strategy, as you would expect under the Good Friday Agreement um, in relation to statutory duties and equality. The absence of an Irish language strategy adversely impacts on Irish speakers in this Assembly, MLAs, staff, workers, and also visitors to the Assembly. The Assembly Commission um, does have a draft uh, language uh, guidance, but it is not a substitute for an Irish language strategy. And I would expect that there is um, further discussion at future meetings in relation to this uh, deficit. I call uh, Dominic Badley for supplementary. Gormila Mayogat, last con colleague, as Gorm Buiachas, less than while Tonolas Achtan Ragra Kimshi Hachin. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the member for that comprehensive answer. Uh, can I ask the member um, if she recalls uh, a number of years ago that uh, a consultation was carried out by the Commission uh, on uh, the formulation of uh, languages policy? And some of us went to some trouble to respond to that. Uh, can I ask the member, uh, is there any chance? even now, after three years, uh, that the results of that consultation will be acted upon? Well, I share the member's frustration. Um, and I think it's disappointing that we don't have a strategy. And I can assure the member I can't speak for everyone on the Commission. And while we are a corporate body, um, I will say that I believe we should have an Irish language strategy. I pay tribute to the people who made representation, and I can absolutely understand their disappointment. I call Cathal Hwashin. So I, what I would ask um, the question is: uh, there are an option for tourism visit, visits to be conducted at Gilga, and if not, does the Commission have plans to facilitate, facilitate these? Well, Gawain Buick has done done bald on Chanol, done Kesht Shin. I'd like to thank the member for that question. And unfortunately, currently we don't have an option in relation to tours. And this is disappointing for Irish language uh, speakers and those who, who love our language. And I believe it's one of the direct results of the failure to have an Irish language strategy and of the Assembly Commission to fulfil its equality duties. I call Sandra Overend. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can the Commission member um, detail the cost of translating all the content on the Assembly edu uh, Education's website into Irish? Language in 2015? Um, I can't, and I don't think uh, cost should be the only factor uh, in relation to translation, and, and I hope the member isn't saying that. Um, we don't uh, cost the, uh, how much English it costs us to put English on the website. Or indeed, I believe we should also be trying to make sure that we reach out to people from different countries who uh, speak different languages. Um, but I do know it's not an exorbitant cost, and it certainly shouldn't be used as an excuse uh, for discriminating against the Irish language community. And I'm sure the member isn't saying that. Moving on, I call Rosalind McCorley. Uh, question two. Um, can I thank the member for her question? Augustan Mehelam and Drake Flan Gnevyak the Inchkna, Eg Farberch, Drake Flan Gnevyak the Inchkna, the Erlen Naruniakta, Tofurin Shinchero, Trasnan Chonol, Erna Nrupa. A draft Gender Action Plan for Secretariat staff is currently being developed by the Gender Action Plan Working Group, a group comprising senior members and um, staff from across the Assembly. 
The development of a gender action plan is a recommendation arising from the working group's gender finding reports, which was approved by the Commission in December 2014. The report contains a review of research, including international research and best practice in other organisations, as well as the results of the staff gender questionnaire, all of which will inform the development of the action plan. And I'm sure we'll all agree that we, given the makeup of directors and that in our assembly, that it is very important that we do take action because currently uh, we have um, gaps in relation to gender. Subgroups have been established to take forward key themes and identified in the findings of the report are caring responsibilities, decision-making structures, flexible working, gender identity, learning and development opportunities. And of course, to make change, we need leadership from uh, the top of the organisation to ensure a uh, key to success. Um, the Gender Action Working Plan is liaising with officials, considering Commission-related aspects of the Assembly and Executive Review Committee report, that's a review of women in politics, and the Northern uh, Assembly. Lena Koshin, Hionol and Mehel Imokt e Kanchor Inchkna, Ivergnav na Parliament, Sharon Kade Law, the Valton Agavila, a Kuig Jag, Lakar Kamas Bal na Mehla, Folam, Fui Kanas a Hogter, Fui Keshtan Inchkna in Agriokta Ella. In addition, the group held a gender guest speaker event in Parliament buildings on the 1st of May 2015 to enable group members to learn about how gender issues are addressed in uh, other uh, institutions. And it will be submitted to the Commission in September 2015 for its consideration. And I call Rosalie McCauley for a supplementary. Gurmai of the Las Concolia, August Gombuyas, Leshen Bal, Asen, and Fragwishin. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I, I thank the member for that answer. And Deglo Mira and Bal, and Will and Commission are an Olus, we Kadavi Racha, Egan Commissioner Capacan Fibli, Tagola Suffolk, Majula Askbaban, or Vorge Fibli. Um, can I ask the member, is the Commission aware of comments made by the outgoing Commissioner for Public Appointments in relation to the lack of women on public boards? Um, I am aware of it. In fact, it was circulated to every MLA and I share the Commissioner's disappointment in, rela in relation to women in public life. And while uh, we're looking at staff here in the Assembly and also uh, the number of women politicians, of course there are not enough uh, women on public boards. And I think it's all of us in this chamber need to make sure that we have more representative public boards. I read uh, in detail the letter from the Commissioner and I would like to pay tribute to him for outlining that to us and writing to each and every one of us. I call Karen McKevitt. Speaker, uh, in the member indicated in her last reply about some of the actions that have been taken uh, by the Commission in order to uh, implement the plan just parts of the plan. Can I ask the member then, uh, in the short term, in order be to begin the full implementation of the plan, what actions can be taken? Well, um, I raised I, and I asked the Assembly Commission to carry out the Gender Action Plan because I do know that there are serious gaps right across this institution in relation to gender. We just need to look around this chamber to see that. Um, some actions have been carried out. We did have public events. I know uh, the Speaker has taken some uh, action in, in relation to ensuring that we have uh, more women uh, in positions of leadership. Um, and in September, we'd be discussing uh, fully at the Commission uh, meeting in relation to gender action. If the member has any ideas on how I know that uh, she, along with other members in this chamber, were away with us in Sweden looking at how we can move forward in relation to gender, I would certainly, and I know other members of the Commission, would certainly welcome any ideas that the member has in relation to this. This is a serious deficit that we really need to get uh, come to grips with. Moving on, I call Paul Given. Speaker, question number four. And the question will be answered uh, on behalf of the Commission by Pat Ramsey. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I propose to take questions four and five uh, together and I thank the members for their question. The members will be aware that in order to facilitate the roof project, which is nearing completion, the fourth floor and all of the roofs of Parliament buildings are presently in the possession of the main contractor for the works. As required under the contract, temporary barriers and signage are in place to deter unwarranted access to the contractor site. 
although there is a requirement to maintain access for the contractor's workmen and the egress in the event of fire evacuation. Following the incident in question, the Commission, in conjunction with the contractor, took the following steps immediately to minimise the risk of any further recurrence. First, the flag raising mechanism on the flagpoles were temporarily decommissioned to prevent flags being raised on the flagpoles. Secondly, access was restricted to that particular area of the roof. This was achieved by addition of one locking mechanism and the replacement of another on the two access doors that lead to that area of the roof. Finally, CCT cameras were installed in the vicinity of the flagpoles. Images from these cameras are directly seen in the control room. Further to this, the Assembly's operational procedures relating to workmen's security clearance and the issue of contractors' passes will also now be a subject to review as part of the wide-ranging review of security arrangements in Parliament buildings to be undertaken by the Commission. Members will have also noted that the Speaker wrote to all members on the 8th of June, providing a report on the Commission's considerations of this incident. Call Paul Given for supplementary. Uh, can I thank uh, the member for that response? And despite the best efforts of people in this House and indeed some outside it, Northern Ireland is still British. Uh, and to have a foreign flag hoisted on this building uh, is something that people shouldn't necessarily laugh Can about. But that said, <coughs> that said, there are clear health and safety concerns, irrespective of one's view of the type of flag that was flown. We could have been talking about a fatality given the location of where the, the flag poles are on this building. Has the member got a question? I do, Deputy Speaker. Please proceed now. Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you for that, Deputy Speaker. Uh, can the member assure uh, this House that there will be no hiding behind the police investigation and that a proper investigation uh, will be carried out by the Assembly externally that will lead to sanctions if it is found individuals who are in this building were responsible for this act? I thank the member for the question, and he, and he does raise the point of health and safety. I can assure the member there was never any concern on health and safety and during the completion of the project, which is very close in hand. There were two minor incidents, which were well under control, separate to the flag incident, where there was no health and safety risk, as we understand it, and they were completely under control uh, by, by the contractor. The point the member reflects on in terms of going forward, uh, security is always a question, and is always something that the Assembly Commission reviews on a constant basis. The police are presently undertaking a, a further security risk assessment on Parliament buildings and we are due to receive that report soon. The Assembly Commission's internal staff are due to bring a report very coincidentally to tomorrow's Assembly Commission meeting. As a result of that report, we will then consider whether it is appropriate to seek an internal independent assessment on security risk as well. I call William Humphrey. Speaker, and I just note the, the, the laughter across the chamber in, rela in relation to the question asked by my colleague. Indeed, I understand some members of Sinn Féin thought it was very light-hearted and relaxed about the idea of the Irish tricolour flag of this building for 10 minutes. Pity they wouldn't take an attitude about a parade along the Crumlin Road for six minutes yeah. in North Belfast. Can we have a question, please? Yeah, having a, the, I thank Mr Ramsey for his answer. In relation to the, the whole issue of health and safety, I appreciate what he has said. But in relation to security, can I ask... The Commission member, uh, who had ultimate responsibility for the roof, and was this a breach of the contract? Yeah, it certainly was not a breach of the contract. And who was responsible for the roof? In any project undertaken, particularly one of this significant nature, the contractor had full responsibility uh, for the upkeep and for access to, to the roof. As the member will be aware, there is presently a police investigation onto the incident that happened on the roof. And because of that, uh, the Assembly Commission just would not be in a position to, to lay blame until we find out ultimately the outcome of that police investigation. I call Sean Lynch. Uh, last can call you, and I think the people of Ireland saw it as a, a light-hearted moment. Does the member of the Commission think that it was a good use of PSNA time and public money to investigate this issue? Well, I think because there was a breach of security uh, to the building and access to it, 
I think it is imperative of the Assembly Commission to take appropriate action to try and ensure that it does not happen again. It does not matter you know, the seriousness of whether it was a flag or it could have been a bomb for that matter, that it is important that the Assembly Commission takes appropriate steps, and whether that means the police investigation, which is on the hand to try and determine uh, who was at fault, and if they can lay blame, and if they care or are in a position to prefer charges, but I am sure the member would also agree that it is important and imperative of the Assembly Commission to ensure the safety, not just of Assembly members, not just of the staff, but the high volumes of visitors that attend here. When we look at the public gallery this afternoon, the amount of young children that were here as well. So we have an imperative to ensure that those, those safety are ultimate in our thoughts. And as I replied previously, we are discussing this tomorrow at the Assembly Commission. We will be reviewing, as we constantly do, ongoing security and the threat of that. So we look forward, one, to the police investigation, one, to the police assessment of security risk, but also our internal review of, of security as well. I call Tom Elliott. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mr Ramsey for, for the answers. He did mention the PSNI investigation. I'm wondering if the contractor has carried out any internal investigation or if there has been any a report forthcoming from the contractor to the Assembly Commission about the incident? Certainly, what I can assure the member is that the contractor has fully cooperated fully with the investigation internally. Uh, but in terms of, of laying blame, as, as most people want to find out and find out who ultimately was responsible for this incident, it is a case that we are awaiting the outcome of the police investigation. We are fully content that the contractor has applied and fully supported uh, the police investigation as well. So we are waiting the outcome before we can make a, a definitive. A statement as well in terms of if there is someone liable or to be prosecuted as a result of that. I call Jim Allister. Thank you. I want to press the Commissioner on why the Assembly's own investigation was suspended under the guise of a police investigation, not so long ago with allegations about abusive expenses. That resulted in tandem a police investigation and an Assembly investigation. Surely there was no reason other than the attempt to sweep it under the carpet to suspend the Assembly investigation because of a quite different investigation addressing different issues, namely the police investigation. You know, I, th I thank the member for his question. He knows fine well uh, with his own career in law that in any investigation where the, the police are principal call in terms of determining who was responsible for it, we're respecting that. It doesn't take away and and there is no circumstances where the Assembly Commission as a whole or the director in any circumstances want to sweep this under the carpet, as he implies. I think it is a case that I have outlined to a number of members the number of areas where the, the Assembly Commission has taken this quite seriously. Uh, there is uh, the police investigation, and to date they have interviewed all those employees who had access to the roof on that date that is subject to, to their investigation. The assembly, committee, or the assembly team directed have clearly carried out their own internal audit of the circumstances leading up to it. And I made it clear to the previous member that the contractor fully complied and cooperated with it. We are now awaiting our own directorate's review of security within the House. But under no circumstances can he nor should he be permitted to say that this is something being dismissed by the Assembly Commission because it is not accurate, Mr Deputy Speaker. Moving on, I call Pat Sheehan. Mr. Margaret, Kirsty Shea, question six. I call Katrina Ryan to answer on behalf of the Commission. Gawn bwyach ys leis yn gwaelt a sachest, agos rhyn nhw corlach o'n formal ta'n eir aff reich nhw'n ffalasi ar croc o'r fratach an eint a siwrs cion ffyrgnaf na parlament ym ar cwyd dy masunach tionc ar cwanan ys. Crych nhw'n corlach o'n eir an dar y lo dy mi fiawra gofil o cwyd jeg. And can I thank the member for his question? The formal consultation carried out as part of the EQIA on the review of the policy of the flying of the British flag uh, ended on Monday, the 2nd of February 2015. At our meeting on 17 June 2015, a proposal was put by the DUP to fly the flag for 365 days. This was uh, supported by the UUP but failed to secure uh, support, so it was uh, not 
uh, voted, not supported, the proposal was defeated. Then um, the vote all on DUP, on UUP, August Porti na co Gulyakta, er son Lecha Anniha, vote all Sinn Fein, August an SDLP in Agunya. Tomer Hafid Hanafein, Nakay and Commission on Ochla Dila Leshan Gesht Shah, to Asnav An Fosi Vergen of the Parliament, Major Lagak Tradushan, Tradushan Nakhluk. It was subsequently we had a proposal by the Alliance Party for designated days, and the DUP, the UUP, and Alliance supported this. Um, SDLP and Sinn Fein voted against it, and the motion passed. Um, I am on record in, the, in this chamber, and I just would like to reiterate it, that the Commission was, is not the place, and it itself in 2002 agreed it should not discuss the issue of flags. And there's a democratic deficit in relation to decisions made at the Commission. Really, they should be coming to this Assembly where we have cross-community voting. Call Pat Sheehan for supplementary. I'm going to ask you 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 uh, could I ask the uh, Commission member if she believes that the, the flying of only one flag is in line with the intentions and the spirit of the Good Friday Agreement? Sin, and I'd like to thank the member for that question. And I, I don't believe that the flying of uh, one flag is in the spirit of the Good Friday Agreement. Um, currently, we have people in this chamber who are Irish, who designate themselves as Irish, and people who designate themselves as British. Um, the current policy of the Commission does not give equality to Irish citizens, whether it's in this chamber or indeed uh, party staff, secretariat, and workers in, in this building. I believe it has an adverse impact. Also, it's interesting the consultation, um, the majority. The highest number of people, 1,512 people, opted for two flags. And it's very disappointing that this was ignored in the report. I, as an Irish citizen, don't believe that uh, my flag is being respected in the way it should be. I call Kieran McCarthy. Uh, thank the member for her answer. But I, I stand here as a proud Irish man, and I would like to ask the member to explain what reason Sinn Féin and indeed the SDLP uh, gave, uh, she can give for voting against the EQIA, even though they voted for it at the City of Belfast City Hall? Well, uh, first of all, I, I, I'm speaking as a Commission member here, but the question was asked of me as, as Sinn Féin, so I will answer the member, and I, I won't speak for the SDLP in this because I, I I don't think that would be right for me to do. Um, in relation to, and I'm a proud Irish woman, and I believe uh, the Parliament should have uh, the Irish tricolour and the British flag, are no flags, equality or neutrality. In relation to uh, City Hall, the, the situation in, in City Hall was uh, originally there was 365 days being brought down to 18 days. Here we had uh, 15 days and the proposal by Alliance increased the number of days. So it's pretty logical why an Irish man or woman wouldn't want to see an increase in days, particularly when the Irish tradition isn't reflected. I call William Humphrey. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, would the, minister or the, um, the Commissioner agree with me that in 1998, in the Belfast Agreement, she may well have voted one way, I another? Northern Ireland's constitution position was settled. The sovereignty of Northern Ireland is resolved, and Northern Ireland is an integral part of the United Kingdom, and the Union flag is the flag of this part of the Kingdom and the flag of this Assembly as a devolved administration and in the United Kingdom. The member considers himself British. I consider myself Irish. I call Jim Allister. Why is the Commissioner abusing her position in this House this afternoon? She is here to answer as a Commissioner on behalf of the Commission and to give us the Commission's policy. Why are we being treated to a diatribe of her partisan views on these issues? Could I ask everyone to show courtesy and respect to everyone? Yeah. Oh, well, I am here answering as a Commissioner, and I absolutely reject uh, that I have abused my position in any way. The member will understand fully that there are deeply divided positions in relation to 
uh, attitudes in this chamber and also the Assembly Commission. It is for this reason that I believe the Assembly should, Commission should answer to the uh, Assembly rather than uh, make decisions at the Commission. Um, but I uh, am an Irish citizen, I am a proud Irish citizen. I respect the fact that people opposite consider themselves British. I ask the same for, uh, for me. Moving on, I call Martin O'Mullier. Uh, a question, ever a shot, question at seven. And again, I asked uh, Katrina Moran to answer on behalf of the Commission. On Ked Law, the Vianna Gavila Kudjeg, Win Gawke Chakta with Do, Group of Fimas and Chervish Educus, is on and Shin, Agasok Milanigade, a Kudjeg, Ran Farchi. Since the 1st of January 2015, 272 groups have availed of the education service, comprising 8,901 uh, participants. I call Martin Miller for a second. Gur Gurmaya, that's Mohis Foster, as a commissioner, as in Ragrish, and uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and my thanks to the uh, uh, commissioner and assembly member. Boilam Keshtikar, Erhi on Doyleha, Oharla, Foss, Gasta, Inta Haver, and Gaelic, Lepienta Paganus, Oharla Ve Reichig and Kedara, Peter Robinson, Guamasega, Er Fobble Nagiliga, Ogs Oharla Nish, Gual and Gaelic Alath Nuamak. Uh, in Pobble, Protestant, and Foster, and Doyleshin Commissioner Gugulur uh, Servishi are filed in the Skull and the I'd like to ask the uh, Commission member, in the context of the rapid growth of the Irish language across the North, uh, in the context of the First Minister's commitment in this chamber that uh, he uh, respects the Irish language community, uh, and in the context also of the cross community nature of much Irish language promotion as evidenced by. Skiing us in the tourist project in East Belfast. Does the Commission member believe there is enough being done by this service to accommodate Irish medium schools? Um, well, Gaun Buiacus done Kesh Chin. I'd like to thank the member for that uh, question. And um, obviously, we can always do more in relation to any of the work that we're doing, and that the same is true of the Irish medium sector. And I absolutely support the member's comments that the Irish language belongs to anyone, everyone. Uh, it is certainly not the preserve of any one community. And I'm delighted to see people right across the north from all different communities um, uh, supporting and learning uh, the, our beautiful language. It's, it's our collective language. And also people from our ethnic minority communities uh, who have brought such richness to our society with their languages, um, they are also learning the Irish language, and I think it's great to see that. Um, in relation to the uh, education service, an education officer has been designated Irish language champion. Um, there has been an education officer has visited the Irish Medium Post Primary Schools, Colosh the First, the Irish Medium Unit of uh, Skull Katrina in Ardwaka, in Armagh, and two of the visits to Colosh the First involve focus group workshops on behalf of the Committee for Education to consult young people on inquiries into shared and integrated education and the school inspectorate. Um, as part of its ongoing development of the Education Service website for schools and young people, the Education Service has been working with CCEA on a translation of the primary section of the website, and this is almost complete and will be launched in 2015. And they've also